Tonight, I'm asking, what kind of reckoning is the Republican Party going through when they continue to embolden a man that said this just last night about the insurrection intended to topple our democracy on January 6th? If I run and if I win, we will treat those people from January 6th fairly. We will treat them fairly. And if it requires pardons, we will give them pardons because they are being treated so unfairly. Now, no one should be pardoned for what they did in January the 6th. Trump also called on supporters to mount large protests in cities like Atlanta and New York if prosecutors who are investigating him and his businesses take action against him. Have we learned nothing from the last time? January 6th was traumatizing for us as a country, and especially for those lawmakers inside the Capitol that day. But we continue to be re-traumatized again and again as figures in the Republican Party prop up a man who continues to use the same inflammatory language for political gain. Joining me now is freshman Congresswoman Melanie Stansberry from New Mexico. Congresswoman, thank you so much for your time this evening. Uh, former President Trump, in fact, had a statement out this evening referring to the bipartisan effort to reform the electoral count, which is gaining some traction in Congress. In fact, he continued to push that Vice President Mike Pence had the power to overturn the election. Obviously, I see that as a flat-out admission of guilt for what he was trying to do on January the 6th. You see it there on the bottom of, uh, of the screen. Uh, what's your take on this statement tonight, that, that he believed that Mike Pence could have overturned the election. That's what he wanted him to do. Well, Eamon, thank you so much for having me on tonight. What is clear is that we know that the Trump organization engaged in criminal activity with regards to the steal of this election. And in fact, here in New Mexico, in my own state, we know that two members of our, our GOP have actually been subpoenaed by the January 6th special committee. And um, what we know is that fake electors were actually um, sending forward documents that were um, signifying that Trump had won the election in states like New Mexico, where that is clearly false. In fact, in New Mexico, Trump lost and Biden won by 11 points, by 99,000 votes in our state. This is criminal activity in our state laws. It's been referred by our AG for federal action. And we must find out and get to the bottom of what happened at the federal level. So our you know, select committee will be investigating these charges along with everything else that's been going on. Yeah, and speaking of the uh, select committee, the January 6th committee said it is subpoenaing more than two dozen people involved in the fake elector scheme following the 2020 election. Uh, two of those individuals from your home state of New Mexico, does it surprise you how far the former president's supporters went to overturn the election? I think that it's shocking to see the degree to which local officials, especially in the state of New Mexico and all across the country, participated in this huge lie and fabrication and effort to steal our democracy. The foundation of our democracy is open, free, and fair elections. And I am appalled and disgusted to see that local officials in my own state, including in our state GOP, have participated in these activities, which are clearly criminal and were clearly designed to overturn the will of the people. And we really have to get to the bottom of these issues. I want to move on to your work that you're doing in Washington. You've already gained uh, quite the reputation when it comes to climate policy. And uh, thank God there is someone who's out there fighting for climate policy in a meaningful way. Your colleagues have actually described you as a policy wonk with a staffer level knowledge about environmental issues. How did climate become such an important cause for you? And more importantly, I can understand why it has become a cause for you. Why do you think, from what you've seen so far in Congress, has it not been a cause for your colleagues? Well, I've worked on climate and water resilience my entire career. I've actually uh, worked at the nexus between science and sustainability and social justice since I was a kid. My background is as a science educator, and I've worked especially in water resources throughout my career. And during the Obama administration, I worked in the White House Council on Environmental Quality and OMB and the U.S. Senate. And like so many 
young new people who came to politics after the 2016 election. I ran for office because I believe deeply that we can bring meaningful change, not only to our political system, but that the moment demands that new leaders step up and step into spaces that they have never been before to really fight for the issues that we care about, like climate change. And what I believe is that we're really at this inflection moment globally in terms of solving our climate crisis. We know that the problem is a chemistry problem, an economics problem, and a political problem. And we have the ability to solve those problems in terms of the chemistry and the policy, but we have not yet mustered the political will to make it happen. And that's why it's so important that there's leaders like myself and so many of the new young leaders who are in Congress serving in our legislatures across the country who are out there fighting every single day to get meaningful legislation passed. Now, with respect to what happens next, in Congress, we have to get the Build Back Better Act passed. It is the best opportunity that we have in the immediate future to solve the climate crisis. It makes the largest single investment in climate change our country has ever made, over a half a trillion dollars, and really tries to address this problem in a multifaceted and multi-sectoral way. So we have to get this bill across the finish line, and then we have to double down and help support our communities and lift up those community-based solutions so that we can start to combat climate change on the ground. Let's talk about Build Back Better for a moment. As you just mentioned there, it's a major part of President Biden's uh, efforts to combat uh, the climate crisis. That legislation is back to the negotiating table, as you know, after Senator Manchin pulled his support uh, for it last month. Realistically speaking, what are both some of the non-negotiable items that you have for that bill? And do you think Democrats can get it done if they approach it from a different way, such as breaking up the items in that bill and trying to pass them as standalone? Is that the approach that you think can see some action on climate change? Well, I believe that we absolutely can and will get something done. I will say that unequivocally. Um, what is clear is that in order to get climate legislation and many of the social provisions across the finish line, we have to use the reconciliation process because we don't have 60 votes in the Senate to get meaningful climate legislation across the finish line right now. So what is non-negotiable in the package is that we whittle it down to something that doesn't actually address the problems. And that is addressing our carbon footprint, empowering our communities to actually build a more resilient future and investing in those fundamentals that we need so that our communities can plan for a more water resilient future. They can address wildfire. We can protect our public lands and our ecosystems and we can protect our infrastructure. So those are some of the core pieces that are really important for climate change in the Build Back Better Act. And politically speaking, I do believe that there is the political will to get the Build Back Better done. I I think that all of the important parties are at the table. They're having the right discussions and they're trying to find the right path forward. And I think we'll get it done by the end of the year. Congresswoman uh, Melanie Stansberry from New Mexico, thank you so much for your time, Congresswoman. Greatly appreciate it. And best of luck to you on that important fight for stopping the climate crisis.